from Creativo Solutions. You are currently watching the support videos for the British International Distance College Accounting Module and I am taking you through assignment number 4 showing you how you can approach the different questions. Please visit our website for more information, content and resources to help you. Consider following us on Instagram and Twitter and keep watching the YouTube channel for more support. We've covered the first two questions, we're now going to be looking at question 3 for assignment 4, so let's begin. Question 3 gives you a trial balance. They say at the end of April 2016, an inexperienced bookkeeper prepared the following trial balance for Khalid Hassan. Okay, so we've got a debit column and a credit column and you've got different accounts. You've got revenue, purchases, inventory. When I see purchases and inventory, I'm thinking that this is the periodic system. You've also got wages, general expenses, repairs and maintenance, machinery and equipment, motors, trade receivables, trade payables, cash, bank overdraft, drawings and capital. That's what they've given you. And they've indicated here that capital is the balancing figure. Then they say, in addition to the obvious er errors in the trial balance, the accountant also discovered the following errors, which the trial balance failed to disclose. They've given you five points there, and then they've given you A and B. A says for each one of the above five items, state the type of error that was made. And then B, prepare an amended trial balance um, at 31st April showing the correct capital balance. Great. So now we're basically correcting the trial balance. So we have to draw up a trial balance for the year ended or well, the trial balance at what was this date 30 April 2016 that was the dates that we were given and then you'll obviously have a debit side and you'll have a credit side and we're going to be recreating the trial balance for this particular business They first want us to tell them what the different errors are, so I'm going to put a note here 3A. They want us to tell us what the errors are. So error number one states, 150 for the cost of repairing a motor had been debited to the motor's account. So we've got obviously a repair that was debited to the motor's account, which is obviously an asset. So a motor would be seen as a asset. Motor expenses or repairs would be seen as an expense. Did they capture the motor repairs as a motor? Yes, they did. So that's the problem. This would have been an error of principle. because you're not following the correct rule. You're capturing an expense as an asset, and that's wrong. 3B. The next error says, $50 cash paid for general expenses had not been recorded. If it hasn't been recorded, you've left it out. So this would have been an error of original entry. We haven't captured something. 3C, the third error, errors of addition had been made resulting in the sales being overcast by 100 and the wages being overcast by the same amount. This was errors of addition. So we've calculated something incorrectly, resulting in the sales being overcast and the wages being overcast by the same amount. All right, so this is definitely something that you've done in terms of a calculation, a calculation error. This would be an error of original entry. You've made a mistake with your adding. The fourth one. When an invoice for goods purchased on credit was recorded, the amount was entered as 1000 instead of 100. Again, we've missed the mis uh, well, we've missed an amount in terms of you record it as too much or too little. Let's have a look. The amount was entered as 1000 instead of 100. So it's too much. So definitely error of original entry. 
you've made a mistake with the capturing of that transaction. Number E, the fifth one. A check received from a debtor for 200 had been debited to the trade receivables account and credited to the bank account. Well now, if I'm looking at a check that was received from a debtor, that should have increased bank and decreased trade receivables. I can see I've done the complete opposite. So there will be a complete reversal error. Meaning I've captured that transaction completely wrong in terms of the opposite accounts being affected here. They said I credited the bank and debited the trade receivables. If you're receiving a check from a debtor, it should have been the opposite. You should have debited the bank and credited the trade receivables. So those are errors that we need to identify. Those are the first five. That was A. Um, we had to group one, two, three, four, five. Then we've got the trial balance that we need to correct. They say we need to prepare an amended trial balance for um, Khalid for the um, date 31st April. Show the correct capital balance. Great. So now let's go back and fix. We've got revenue. We've got purchases. Let's put in the amounts as well to show the working. Revenue has an amount of 95,300. Then we've got purchases. Purchases, 51,600. Inventory, they say first May 2015, so that's opening. Given as 5,000. Then we've got wages given as 18,200. General expenses, general expenses given as 7,300. Repairs and maintenance, given as 2,300. 2,700, sorry, wrong amount. Let's just double check that. 7,300 for general expenses. And then we've got 2,700 for repairs and maintenance. Machinery and equipment, 58,550. Five, eight, five, Eight five five zero. Then we've got motors. Motors was fifteen nine hundred. Next account is trade receivables. Trade receivables fifteen eight hundred. Fifteen eight hundred. Trade payable, 7,300. Cash, 350. Bank overdraft, 3,800. Drawings, 12,000. And capital they want is the balancing figure. So obviously they've got the debits and credits incorrect. For example, revenue here they've given you a debit. Revenue is an income, so that should be on the credit side. Right, so I've just included the actual amount, so we'll discuss which side of the account we're going to record it on. Capital balancing figure. And we'll look at that just now. Now we need to go back to all those errors and we need to adjust our trial balance for those mistakes. So let's go back to number one and read the error. 1,500 for the cost of repairing a motor had been debited to the motors account. So that means I need to credit motors. I need to remove it. Minus 150. And I need to add it to repairs and maintenance. Because that's the correct account. It's the repair that needs to be recorded, not an increase in the asset. Then number two, 50 cash paid for general expenses had not been recorded. So 50 cash paid, so cash is going to decrease by 50. 
and this was paid for general expenses. General expenses will go up plus 50. Error 3. Errors of addition had been made resulting in the sales being overcast. So sales being overcast, meaning it's too high, so minus 100, and the wages being overcast. So if the wages are overcast, that needs to go down as well. So wages overcast, minus 100. Overcast meaning it's too high, we need to fix the mistake by reducing it. Then number 4 says, when an invoice for goods purchased on credit was recorded, the amount was entered as 1000 instead of 100. When an invoice for goods purchased on credit, so purchased on credit would have affected the trade payables. It was recorded at 1000 instead of 100, so I need to reduce that by 900. And this was for purchase of purchases of goods, so the goods also need to decrease by 900. And the final error says, a check received from a debtor for 200 had been debited to the trade receivables account. So we can't debit the trade receivables. I need to remove the error that was made. So minus the 200. And I need to credit the bank. I need to debit the bank. So the bank overdraft will be debited. So the overdraft will decrease by 200. The overdraft will be less because the bank is going to go up. And then we need to process the actual receipt because now we've removed the error and now we need to process the correct entry. So then I'm going to minus 200 and I'm going to minus 200 there because you're receiving money. So the bank overdraft is going to go down because it's a bank overdraft, it's a liability, and the trade receivables will go down. And those are all the errors. So now all we need to do is work out the totals and put that in the correct column. Revenue is an income, so it's going to go on the credit side. Purchases is seen as an expense, so purchases will be recorded on the debit side. Inventory, opening balance of 5,000. I'm going to leave that as is, and I'm going to record that as a debit for inventory. Wages was affected. Wages is an expense, so expenses have a debit balance. General expenses, another expense, it'll have a debit balance. Repairs and maintenance has a debit balance because it's an expense. Machinery equipment, that stays here. Motors uh, will decrease, so let's, that'll be a debit because it's a, an asset. Trade receivables is an asset, so that'll have a debit. Trade payables is an, a liability, so it'll have a credit. Cash will be 300 debit. Bank overdraft will decrease. It's a liability, so it'll have a credit. Drawings will have a debit. So when finding the balance of capital figure, I'm going to have to total up and obviously I can see here that the debit side looks a lot bigger than the credit side. Gives me that answer. And then the balance of capital figure will be the total here minus all the separate credits. And that gives me 81,000 as the balance of figure for capital. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it helpful and consider subscribing to the channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and we'll keep creating more to help you.